A very warm good evening to all of uh, all the history enthusiasts. Uh, today we are celebrating Gandhi Jayanti and Lal Bahadur Shastri Jayanti. And on this occasion, we have organized this lecture uh, on a very, very important personality of Indian political scenario of uh, the independence movement, uh, that is Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, of course, there were many, many uh, brave warriors who fought for the independence of this great country. And among them, Mahatma Gandhi uh, rose as one of the uh, most prominent leaders. So uh, on this occasion, uh, we are very happy to have this lecture here. And I request Dr. Aditya Hegde, Executive Committee Member of the History Enthusiasts, to welcome the virtual gathering. Uh, thank you, Manali. Um, very warm good evening to everybody. On the occasion of Gandhi Jayanti, we are organizing this special lecture on Gandhiji and Civil Disobedience Movement in Bombay, Karnataka. Professor Basar Jakki sir delivering this uh, particular uh, special lecture. Um, on the behalf of history enthusiasts, I welcome Dr. Basar Jakki sir, Professor of History, Government First Grade College, Dandeli, Karnataka. And my heartiest welcome to core committee members and advisory board members of history enthusiasts. Uh, I also welcome our audience from India and abroad. Um, those who are working in different capacities, students, teachers, learned peoples also. Um, at last but not least, I welcome my sister and host of this um, special lecture, Ms. Manali Momaya. Uh, once again, I welcome each and everyone uh, to the special lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Manali, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aditya Hegde, sir. Uh, I also welcome you to this uh, lecture and uh, without any further ado, I now request uh, Dr. Basavra Jaki sir to begin the lecture and uh, sir had insisted us not to uh, introduce him, but sir, I, we would we would love to know more about your work and research. So uh, kindly throw some light on your research before you continue, uh, be before you begin the lecture. So thank, thank you so much. So thank you, Manali and uh, uh, dear friend, Dr. Aditya Hegde. Uh, good evening to one and all. I am Dr. Basara Jaki, uh, presently working as professor in Government Professional College, Dandeli, Uttar Karnataka District uh, in Karnataka. So I completed my MA in History and Archaeology, Bachelor degree in Library Science, Diploma in Gandhian Studies from Karnataka University, Dharwad. I did my PhD on Municipal Administration in Mr. Mysore from Karnataka University under the able guidance of uh, Professor K. R. Basaraj. Uh, Department of History and Archaeology in 1997. Uh, after completion of my degree, I worked as a librarian in Government Professional College in Nasimrajpura, Chikmur District. Then I went to uh, Kunkolim Education Societies, Kunkolim Goa. There I worked as a lecturer for one year. Then I joined the Karnataka State Archives as a library assistant in 1990, and I was there for seven and seven years and four months. Then I once again came to Department of College of Education, uh, Karnataka. And in 1997, I joined uh, Government First College in Nargund. Then in 2004, I came to Alnavar. And 2017, I came to Dandeli. Uh, so I completed uh, already one major research project on uh, uh, economic growth in the state of Mysore uh, on uh, agriculture, industry, and uh, trade and commerce from UGC. And uh, industrialization and economic growth, it is also from ICHR. And currently, I'm working on the history of freedom movement in uh, Bombay, Karnataka. It is a major research work from ICHR, New Delhi. I wrote uh, uh, nearly about uh, 55 research articles, which are uh, published in different uh, journals. And majority of them are in South Indian History Congress uh, proceedings. Uh, I delivered nearly about uh, 16 uh, uh, lectures uh, before last year on the occasion of Ajat Ki Amrit Mosto on this uh, topic, including uh, on this uh, uh, forum also. So this is my, uh, and I also worked as a research guide in the Department of History and Archaeology, Karnataka University Dharwad, where I guided uh, uh, four students who have completely successful their uh, degrees. Uh, with this brief introduction, uh, I will start my uh, lecture. Uh, good evening to you, one and all. Today, we, the Indians and the world leaders, are all commemorating 154th birth anniversary of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, a great leader of uh, non-violence. Satyagraha and uh, uh, truth. Uh, at the outset, I convey my sincere uh, best wishes of this uh, Gandhi Jayanti 
to all the listeners elderly scholars colleagues research scholars and students it gives me immense pleasure to share with you few ideas on mahatma gandhi ji and civil disobedience movement in bombay karnataka on the occasion of his birth anniversary at the outset i convey my sincere thanks to the organizers for giving me this uh, golden opportunity to share few of my thoughts on the subject your suggestions and comments on this topic are highly commendable at the same time i express my sincere thanks to indian council of historical research for its financial assistance to undertake uh, to this major research project on history of freedom movement in bombay karnataka uh, so as a result of this i visited the national archives uh, new delhi maharashtra state archives bombay and uh, karnataka state archives bangalore and also visited uh, national library kolkata and west bengal state archives also so in addition to that my discussions with uh, professor ashwath narayan of uh, retired professor of uh, bangalore university bangalore dr s k aruni uh, deputy director of ishr and dr s sandeep uh, my close friend who is currently assumed the charge of principal of government first year college women darwad and professor ik patar who was my teacher in karnataka university darwad and my principal dr md wakuns and dr vinaya ji nayak Uh, the wife of our principal and also my colleague in government particular government particular dandeli uh, for their suggestions on the different occasions on this topic for the moment in, in all these things so this is uh, uh, my uh, sincere thanks to all these members uh, who helped me and who expressed their uh, discussions and that helped me to improve this article those the saga of freedom movement Uh, in india as well as in karnataka and the different parts of karnataka in different parts of india was not uniform it was unevenly unevenly conducted in almost all parts of karnataka and in india also in karnataka this movement was completely different from reason to reason uh, take for example it was different in bombay karnataka mysore state hyderabad karnataka as well as in uh, uh, princely states also after the fourth anglo mysore war the present state of karnataka was divided into uh, different parts as bombay karnataka which included the then uh, dharwad district belgam district bijapur district and uttarakhand district it was divided as hyderabad karnataka which included bellary bidar and gulbarga sorry not bellary raichur gulbarga and bidar bellary was part of uh, madras presidency as well as uh, uh, south kendra also and then remaining uh, prince state of mysore Uh, which was the second uh, rich state uh, native state in india it had a separate uh, administration so like this there was a distribution of uh, these regions for political reasons as a result of this uh, it was not possible for us to witness uh, uniform march of freedom struggle uh, in in karnataka among these uh, political divisions of karnataka the freedom movement was very strong especially in this part of karnataka that is bombay karnataka Uh, as i said it was included in bijapur darwad belgam and uttar kannada later on in 1996 and 97 this area was carved in, in, in new districts like gadag hamiri in darwad district and bagalkot in uh, bijapur district as and today we have seven districts in uh, bombay karnataka uh, these seven districts were in uh, bombay presidency as a result of this it is uh, known as uh, bombay karnataka and today it is called as kallan karnataka the impact of education uh, can be traced in the development of freedom struggle those who were educated in india and abroad uh, they led the movement and those who had their education in india they led the movement at the national level similarly those who were educated in bombay and pune they led the movement in bombay karnataka especially from this part of karnataka the stand of the educated people of the first generation of the freedom struggle was very minimum in bombay karnataka hence they were mere followers of freedom movement freedom leaders uh, our national leaders like uh, gopal krishna gokhale lokmanya balangadhar tilak and mahatma gandhi ji who were very, very close to this part of uh, karnataka it means gujarat and maharashtra uh, the leaders of this region they had they had their education either at pune or at bombay that is especially in uh, 
Elphinstone College, Bombay, and uh, Deccan College, uh, Pune. Uh, in the beginning, the educated Brahmins influenced and took active part in the movement. Now, take for example, Narayan Gangadhar, Narayan Ganesh Chandavar, who was the first degree holder of Uttarakhanda. He was educated in uh, Elphinstone College. He was alumni of Elphinstone College. Uh, he took active part in uh, the Indian National Congress since its birth, since its inception. And he participated in the first session of uh, Indian National Congress in 1885. He also uh, presided the Indian La National Congress session held at Lahore in 1900. Uh, he was the only uh, leader of this part who emerged as a national leader. But uh, due to our bad luck, he breathed his lost in 1927 in Bangalore. Uh, as his uh, uh, field work was in Bombay, uh, he had no contact uh, with anybody uh, in this part of Karnataka. Uh, then the Lingayats, who were the majority of this region, they also started to take active part in this struggle. Uh, those who went to Bombay or Pune for their education, they formed their association as Kannada Sangha. And uh, they also met uh, leaders like Balga Tilak, uh, Gopalkan Gokul, and Mahatma Gandhiji. And they took a lot of benefit from their discussions, their meetings, and their ideas. Uh, because of the influence of those national leaders, this part of Karnataka celebrated national festivals and birth anniversaries of national leaders to gather masses and to educate them for their struggle. Their main intention to celebrate Ganesh Jayanti or Shivaji Jayanti or Baso Jayanti was mainly to educate the people and to gather them at one place. And to, and to educate them regarding about the national movement as a development as they were, most of them were uneducated. They can't read uh, the newspapers at that time. And at that time, the newspapers were read in those uh, meetings. So this is what we can witness uh, from the sources available so far. As far as this uh, civil disobedience movement is concerned, there are few books written by uh, freedom fighters, then uh, educated uh, uh, historians, and a few primary school teachers, especially from Uttarakhand district. So, uh, Rangnath R. Divakar, who was a freedom fighter and who was the participant of this uh, civil disobedience movement, he wrote a book in Kannada that is Karan Ira Karni Virakati, that is the uh, story of uh, non cooperation, non no tax campaign in Uttar Kannada district. And that is the most important book which throws useful light on this uh, particular topic. Manjunath Hagde Shiralgi, Sripath Hagde Mayagar, these two great scholars were primary school teachers in Uttar Kannada district. They wrote a book on Swatantra Samarada Savirada Avakaru. It means they wrote, uh, mm. keeping in mind the, their community people who participated in the freedom struggle in Uttarakhand district. Uh, it also throw many important uh, uh, points to us in order to understand this subject. Andanapa Dhanumiti from Chakli in Drone Taluk of uh, present Gadag district. He was also one of the uh, main leader of this part of Karnataka. He also wrote a book on this uh, no tax campaign in Karnataka. It was published soon after that incident. And that book is presently available in National Archives, uh, New Delhi. That is the only book which is available so far. And it is in a deliberate condition. So uh, we cannot uh, access it uh, very easily in National Archives. And then uh, Dr. Surat Kamath, who worked immensely and uh, uh, very seriously on the freedom movement. He also wrote uh, three books, uh, uh, three volume books on uh, Swatantra Samartha, Swatantra Sangramas Patikro. That also threw useful light on, us, uh, on this uh, particular subject. So, and uh, there are a number of uh, files are available in uh, archives throughout India. Uh, they are also helpful to understand uh, this particular topic. My main objectives of this uh, lecture are uh, we can analyze the impact of freedom struggle upon different reasons by these national leaders. Uh, we can know the origin of freedom struggle in Bombay, Karnataka, how it is different from the rest of Karnataka. We can understand the important leaders of this uh, part of uh, Karnataka. Uh, we can also understand the important events which took place in this uh, saga of freedom struggle. And we can also know the role of women, students, peasants in the freedom struggle. And it also helps us to know the important institutions, intellectuals, and newspapers, which helped a lot in creating awareness uh, upon the public about this uh, freedom struggle. So with this introduction, now directly I will go to the topic that is uh, Gandhiji and his influence on civil disobedience movements, its nature and activities. 
that is from 1930 to 1941. So as you know very well that uh, from 1930, in 1930 there was a Sarsat Agraha. Then in 1932 there was the no tax campaign in Uttarakhand district. Uh, there were only three no tax campaigns took place in India. One is West Bengal, another one is Gaudal in Gujarat, and the third one is in Karnataka. Uh, that is in uh, Uttarakhand district. These are the only three incidents that took place about this no tax campaign. This is also comes under civil disobedience movement. Then we can come across individual satyagraha, which was started by Gandhiji. So hence, this uh, civil disobedience movement was not only restricted to start satyagraha or no tax campaign. Uh, it was there up to 1941. Uh, 1941, before the commencement of Putin movement, all the political prisoners who were arrested under this uh, category or under this uh, uh, satyagraha were released by the Britishers. So in Karnataka, especially in Bombay, Karnataka, there were more than 3,000 persons who were arrested, jailed in different parts of Karnataka as well as Ervada jail in Pune also. So this, in this background, I will start my this uh, lecture. So the first we shall understand what is the background of civil disobedience movement. The Calcutta session of Indian National Congress, that is in 1929, witnessed the differences among the leaders over the question of dominion status and complete independence. In the meantime, Nehru report was rejected by the British. Hence, the Congress session demanded for the complete freedom, it called Purna Swarajya, to the nation, and resolution was passed in 1929. This session was presided by Jawaharlal Nehru. According to the resolution, the central and provincial legislatures and future elections were to be bypassed. The famous civil, dis civil disobedience movement was to be launched. As the deadline for the acceptance of Nehru report was ended by 31st December 1929, Jawaharlal Nehru unfurled the tricolor national flag of India's independence on the bank of River Ravi on 1st January 1930 in Lahore. The Congress Working Committee met on 2nd January 1930 and it, it was decided that 26 January should be observed as Independence Day. Because of this, this incident, the India became Republic on 26 January 1950. In order to commemorate this day, it was uh, implemented or introduced. The Lahore session of 1929 had authorized the Working Committee of the Indian National Congress to launch the civil disobedience movement, including no tax campaign, that is non-payment of taxes. It included, uh, the entire civil, dis civil disobedience movements included Sard Satyagraha, No Tax Campaign, Forest Satyagraha, and Individual Satyagraha. These are the different uh, events of this uh, civil disobedience movement throughout India. And uh, personally, all these four events took place in Karnataka as well as in Bombay, Karnataka also. It had also called upon its members of Legislative Council to resign for their posts or seats. Jawaharlal Nehru expressed his four message while unfur unfurling the national flag at uh, Lahore. I quote, remember once again, now the national flag is unfurled. It must not be lowered as long as a single Indian man, woman or child lives in India. The national flag, which was a symbol of new spirit, now became a common sight even in remote villages of India. A meeting of the Congress Working Committee was held at Sabarmati Ashram, Ahmedabad, Gujarat on 14 February 1930 and empowered Gandhiji to launch the civil, di civil disobedience movement at a time and a place of his choice. Gandhiji's ultimatum of 31st January to Lord Irwin, stating the minimum demands in the form of 11 points had been ignored. Hence, Gandhi started civil disobedience movement those 11 points put forward by Gandhiji were prohibit intoxicants, number one, two, change of ratio between the rupee and the sterling, third one, reduce the ratio of land revenue, fourth one, abolition of uh, salt tax, fifth one, reduce the expenditure of military, fifth one, sixth, reduce expenditure of civil administration, seventh one, impose custom duty on foreign cloth, eighth, accept the postal reservation bill, Ninth one, regarded abolish the CID department. Tenth one, release all political prisoners who were imprisoned in different parts of uh, South India. And issue licenses of arms to citizens for self-protection. Even uh, release of all political 
political prisoners who were imprisoned in northern india also it means entire india after demanding all these uh, demands gandhi said that if the 11 points are ignored the only way out was civil disobedience movement this was the warning given to lord irwin by gandhi ji then he proceeded out with the very famous gandhi march by the end of february the formula began to emerge as gandhi ji began to talk about the salt on march 2nd 1913 he addressed his historic letter to the viceroy in which he first explained at great length why he regarded british rule as a curse to indians it was impervished then dumb millions by system of progressive exploitation it has reduced, reduced us politically to serfdom it has sapped the foundation of our culture it has degraded us spiritually he then informed the viceroy lord irwin about his plan of action uh, about the famous salt satyagraha the second biggest mass movement of the freedom struggle started by gandhi ji in his phase or in his uh, career even gandhi ji said that my plan may frustrate the british which leads to his arrest there will be 10000s ready in a disciplined manner to take up the work after him that is after me he said now we shall say about dandi march which started on 12th march 1930 this was one of the important second mass movements of the freedom struggle both at national and in bombay karnataka level launched by the indian national congress gandhi ji along with his selected 78 followers started the dandi march in order to break the salt law on 12th march 1930 gandhi ji left sabarmati ashram on foot with his 78 followers which included maila madhyavappa a sole representative of bombay karnataka and even karnataka also who was the second youngest uh, satyagrahi in that moment he was just uh, 19 years old at the time they reached the sea at dandi on every 5th after completing 200 miles in 24 days march on 6th april gandhi ji prepared salt with his followers and thus defied the law of government this news spread like wildfire in every nook and corner of gandhi india gandhi ji was arrested on 6th april 1930 and he appointed mr abbas thabji ex justice of baroda to lead the movement he too was arrested on 12th may 1930 then the movement was led by mr sarojin naidu and in the meantime gandhi ji was released after the gandhi urine fact on 26 january 1931 unconditionally in the meantime the leaders of bombay karnataka like kausal ke hanmant rao and dr ds haldikar who was the founder of uh, hindustani seva dal attended the meeting of the working committee of the aicc at andabad on 21st march and narrated about the preparation of satyagraha at ankola to their leaders while returning both of them met gandhi ji at uh, jambusar on his way to gandhi and discussed about the movement they openly appealed to the public that freedom movement in karnataka was started join the peaceful army and donate to, to satyagraha as a result of this 82 pound of money was fixed on the salt salt by the british it was heavy re, heavy rate at the time now we shall see about the, what is the gandhi even fact Gandhi in fact was a political agreement signed by Mahatma Gandhi ji and Lord Irwin the then viceroy of India on 5th March 1931 before the second round table conference in London before this Irwin the viceroy had announced in October 1929 a vague a way of of dominion status for India in an unspecified future and a round table conference to discuss a future constitution to India The second round table conference was held from September to December 1931 in London. This movement marked the end of the civil disobedience movement in India. Gandhi and Lord Irwin had eight meetings that totaled nearly about 24 hours. Although Gandhi ji was impressed by Irwin's sincerity, the terms of the pact fell manifestly short of those Gandhi ji had prescribed as the minimum for his truce that is peace. Gandhi ji managed to have over 90000 political prisoners released under the Gandhi Union Pact. The proposed conditions were number 1 discontinuation of the salt march by the Indian National Congress 
Number two, participation by the Indian National Congress in the second round table conference. Third one, withdrawal of all ordinances issued by the government of India, imposing curbs on the activities of the Indian National Congress. Fourth one, withdrawal of all prosecutions relating to several types of political offenses, that is, role, uh, example, the Royal Act, except those involving uh, violence. Fifth one, release of prisoners arrested for participating in the SART march and removal of the tax on salt which allowed the Indians to produce, trade and sell salt legally and for their own private use. So these were the conditions that were included in the Gandhi Union Pact. Many British officials in India and Britain were outraged by the idea of the pact with the patty whose old purpose was the destruction of the British Raj. It means they thought that these conditions which were laid in the Gandhi Union Pact may definitely affect the British Raj in India, that, that is their administration. So, Winston Churchill publicly especially discussed uh, at that time. Uh, even uh, the uh, newspapers also uh, condemned the demands um, by the Gandhis in this moment. Ultimately, the British government agreed for the following points, that is, Withdraw all audience. It, it, it was agreed to withdraw all audiences and end uh, prosecutions. Release to release all political prisoners except those guilty of violences. Permit peaceful picketing of liquor and foreign cloth shops. And it agreed to restore unconfiscated and properties of the Satyagraha. It meant to, to, res, uh, to restore uh, the properties which were confiscated uh, during the Satyagraha movement. And it also permitted pre collection or manufacture of salt by persons near the sea coast. The sixth one, it also agreed to lift the ban over the Indian National Congress. So these are the terms agreed by the British government in the uh, Gandhi Union Pact of 1931. It also did not agree for the following points. They were Congress demand of inquiring into police access. This was not accepted by the British. They also refused to reduce the punishment given to. Bhagat Singh, Rajguru, and Sukhdev. Gandhiji insisted them to cancel the death penalty given to these three martyrs and to reduce it just by giving uh, terms imprisonment that were uh, 10 years or 15 years like that. So he was against the hanging of these three uh, leaders, but this was not agreed by the British government as they were involved in uh, uh, violent activities. So this, so this is all about a Sar Satyagraha, which took place in India, and the Gandhi Union Pact. Now we shall see about how the Sar Satyagraha took place in Bombay, Karnataka. Here, before the commencement of this uh, Sar Satyagraha in Ankola, it was in in, in Bombay, Karnataka. This selected Ankola area, as it was uh, situated as it is situated on the sea coast. That is the best area to uh, to do this uh, strike. So, as a result of this, in the beginning, they formed a regional committee in order to undertake this. Uh, Moment. By the order, by the order of the Congress, Gangadhar Deshpande and Dr. N. S. Hardikar attended this meeting held at Sabarmati on 14th November 1930. In order to discuss the pros and cons and the organization of the Sar Satyagraha, a meeting of the Karnataka Public uh, Karnataka Province Congress Committee, that is KPCC, was held at Balari on 23rd February 1930. Sri Ranganath Dwakar was the president of the KPCC. In that meeting, an organizing committee was formed consisting of Ranganath Devakar from Darwad, Karnad Sadashivarai from South Kendra, Hanumantra Kauzalgi from Bijapur, Gangadhar Despande from Belagam, Dr. Henne Sadikar from Darwad, you know, who was from Hubli especially at that time. Later on, T. Subramaniam from Bellari and Sankar Gulwadi from Siddhapur, Uttar Pradesh, they were included in this committee. And this committee was called as Satyagraha Mandala. The members of the committee traveled across Karnataka, brought awareness about the movement, and collected fund for that. This was quite natural. Whenever the moment any movement started in Bombay, Karnataka, they used to collect fund from the public. So, collection of public for not their uh, expenditure, they wanted to mobilize the strength, mass strength. They should know why they are collecting the fund and what is the duty of the as a citizen of India, to make, to do contribution for this uh, type of uh, moment, uh, so it is one type of uh, popularizing or publicizing this uh, moment. The committee identified Uttarakhand district as the most ideal place to observe Sar Satyagraha. As I told you earlier, Uttarakhand district is the only district in Bombay, Karnataka, 
situated on the sea coast. Hanumantra Kozilgi had visited Ankola along with Timapanaik, the local leader, and Shankar of Gluwadi, the local leader of Siddhapur. They addressed the public and conveyed the message of Gandhiji and Congress about Sal Satyagraha. The, the people of Ankola wholeheartedly welcomed the decision and made up their mind to make it a grand success. They also decided to bring volunteers from different parts of the state. One uh, really we must appreciate uh, the role of uh, people of Karnataka because uh, irrespective of their uh, district, even uh, Satyagri from Mysore, Dakshin Kanda, Bellari, which was in uh, Madras presidency, and uh, Hyderabad, Karnataka uh, people also came to Siddhapur to take part in the historic moment of Sal Satyagraha, which uh, held in Bombay, Karnataka. So there was no differences among them as they were belong to different uh, geographical parts of uh, Karnataka. So this is how the spirit of nationalism was uh, developed by the national leaders at the time in different parts of Karnataka. Uh, they also decided to bring volunteers from different parts of the state. They collected nearly about 25,000 rupees as Satyagraha fund. The local committee of Ankola consisted of Hari Pai, Shamrao Shainvi, Babu Kamath, MP Nadakarni, Shantu Naik, Vandike Hammana Naik, Bole Bommaya Naik, and Venkatraman. Venkatraman was a Hindi high school teacher, was a high school teacher teaching Hindi, Hindi in uh, Bangalore. Uh, he was specially sent to Siddhapur uh, to train the people. So he came along with his wife, Gauramma. So both of them settled in Siddhapur and their contribution is really commendable in the no-tax campaign as well as uh, Sal Satyagraha and even in Putin movement also. Uh, they also started one uh, Balika Asram at uh, Shivamogga. The local committee of Siddhapur consisted of uh, Bedkini Chaudan Naik, Hanjibail Sannappa Hegde, Venkatesh Haribat, Durgappa Shamiyan, Adwi Thotak Ganesh, but Kallala Mahabaleswar but Kere Hundad Mahabaleswar but like that. The Sirsi local committee consisted of Timmanne Hegde Kate Hegde, Gopal Madgaonkar, Nayak Master, Shankarav Gulwadi, Vadike Master, Raghavendra but Sridhar Koligi, from Karwar, they selected Hanumantrao Manjrika, K. N. I. Raghupati Sini to take part. It means, as the leaders like Ganga, uh, Arad Devakar and N.S. Hadika and Kauzilgi Hanumantrao, they were from uh, Darwad as well as Bijapur. So they do, don't had local contact. So in order to create a local part, in order to develop the participation in local people, these four committees in Karwar, Sisi, Siddhapur and uh, Ankola, uh, they formed consisting of local leaders. Uh, similarly, Sadashiv Karnad, who was from Dakshin Kanda, went to South Karnad district and conducted a camp at Mangalur, in which about 200 volunteers took training. Rangnath Divakar went to Bijapur and brought awareness about the movement. He travelled uh, throughout Bijapur district. Then the members explained the progress of their task in the Karnataka Province Congress Committee meeting held at Darwad on 16th March 1930. It was also decided to bring volunteers from all districts of the state. The other members of the Satyagra Mandala also traveled with them. A subcommittee was also formed consisting of uh, Rangna Devakar, Narayan Joshi from Balagam, Sinosra Kauzilgi uh, from Bijapur, K. Guraj Rao from uh, Blari, M. B. M. Basurur from Uttar Kannada, Vitral Rao Kamath from ODP, R. S. Vikkerikar from Darwad. So these leaders of Bombay Karnataka, other leaders of the Bombay Karnataka like Anmantra Kauzalgi and Dr. N. S. Hardikar attended the All India Congress Committee meeting held at Ahmedabad in Gujarat and explained the activities of the civil disobedience movement of the Bombay Karnataka. In order to organize the Sard Satyagra in Uttar Kannada district, Anmantra Kauzalgi and uh, uh, T. S. Naik, that is Timapa Naik, we are appointed as organizing secretaries. Kausiligi and Mantrao visited all villages of Ankola and met the local Nadwa community people who convinced them about the Sar Satyagra. These Nadwa community members were highly educated at the time. They were very easily in a position to understand the objectives of the Sar Satyagra. As a result, they selected that community people. Um, the Nadavas were small landholders and educated, who could understand the objectives of the mass movement very easily. 
తిమ్మపేస నాయక్ షోల్డర్ ద రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీ ఆఫ్ ప్రిపరేషన్ ఆఫ్ ది మూమెంట్ ఎంపి నాడ్కర్ని అందర్ గ్రేట్ లీడర్ బాస్గోడ్ రామారాయణ్ స్వామి విద్యానంద్ కండక్టెడ్ అవేర్నెస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్స్ ఇన్ అంకోల తాలూకు అనంత్ మహాలే ట్రావెల్ ఇన్ ద డిస్టిక్ అండ్ ఇన్ఫార్మ్ ద అబౌట్ ది అబ్జెక్టివ్స్ ఆఫ్ ది సత్యాగ్రహ మండల్ ది అపాయింటెడ్ లోకల్ కమిటీ యాజ్ ద లీడర్స్ ఇన్ ఆల్ ద విలేజెస్ టు లుక్ ఆఫ్టర్ ది మూమెంట్ ఇన్ దిస్ వే అండర్ ద గైడెన్స్ అండ్ సూపర్విజన్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇండియన్ నేషనల్ కాంగ్రెస్ అండ్ కేపీసీసీ దట్ ఈస్ కర్ణాటక ప్రొవిన్షియల్ కాంగ్రెస్ కమిటీ ద రీజనల్ లీడర్స్ ట్రైన్ ద లోకల్ పీపుల్ ఫర్ లాంచింగ్ ది సాడ్ సత్యాగ్రహ ఇన్ ఉత్తరఖండ ద ఓన్లీ ప్లేస్ సెలెక్టెడ్ ఫర్ ది మాస్ మూమెంట్ బై ది ఇండియన్ నేషనల్ కాంగ్రెస్ ఆఫ్టర్ ది ఫార్మేషన్ ఆఫ్ ది సత్యాగ్రహ మండల్ ఆన్ ట్వంటీ థర్డ్ ఫిబ్రవరి నైన్టీన్ థర్టీ ఇట్ క్రియేటెడ్ అవేర్నెస్ అబౌట్ ద మూమెంట్ అండ్ అలౌడ్ విత్ యూత్స్ అబౌట్ ద ఏజ్ ఆఫ్ ఎయిటీన్ టు రిజిస్టర్ ఎట్ ది ఆఫీస్ ఆఫ్ ది హిందుస్థానీ సేవాదర్ అట్ హుబ్లీ as a result of this volunteers from belgam hubli mangalore came to the camps and whole actively expressed their willingness to take part in the mega event more than 200 volunteers joined the movement hanmantara kausal ki visited ankola kumta gokarna karwar and other leaders like sadashiv karnad swami vidyananda golwadi shankar rao and ts nank also sold the responsibility of publicity of the movement the organizers decided to start the satyagraham 13th april to commemorate the tragic incident of jallianwala box so the message was sent to all the camps and volunteers to come to ankola on 13th april on 6 april 1913 gandhi ji broke the salt law at dandi and very next day he was arrested by the police on the same day gangadhar despande auctioned the salt without paying the tax at belagam then the next day Gangadhar Rao Deshpande, the seller, and the Narayan Rao Joshi and Jeevan Rao Algi, Anant Rao Dhabade, who purchased the salt, were arrested at Belgium. At Hubli, the march of the volunteers were commenced from the office of the Hindustan Sevadar, headed by Rangma Devakar and his wife, Radha Bhai, towards Ankola. People wholeheartedly contributed in the form of money and kind also. Many women donated their valuable ornaments made of gold and silver to the fund. or towards the fund then the team continues journey under the leadership of bindu madhav rao and parmana husmani of haveri at the same time department of police and customs also made their preparation to curb the movement all top officials camped at ankola to review the situation the big house of the tatri narvika was the headquarter of the sard satyagraha at ankola and the pandal put in front of sadashiv's chennai house was the main camp area for the satyagrahi hanumantra kauzalgi kaka karna karkanis from bijapur swami vidyananda shamra shanai and other local leaders of the ankola uh, traveled across the area of coastal part of the district and created mass awareness among the public in the evening the satyagrahi of the surrounding villages came to the ground and attended the function and carefully observed the address delivered by the leaders after all these preparations the satyagraha was started on 13th april 1930 on this historic day ankola city was fully decorated with flowers and garlands the volunteers team from hubli davangere udupi belagam reached ankola on 13th april morning men women and youths also assembled in the ground around 1 pm hanumantra kozalgi mp nadkarni announced the commencement of the civil disobedience movement and 10 satyagrahi bought sea water and mud in a pots and prepared salt and broke the law imposed by the british umabai kundapur sadashiva karnat dr n s radikar and v b purohit also arrived to the site umabai kundapur is from was from hubli uh, nadkarni exhibited the salt prepared there and it was purchased by revu hunnappa naik a local man for rupees 30 bhusle he purchased the salt at 7 rupees and srinivas shetty of davangere also purchased in auction swami vidyananda addressed the huge gathering with his ferocious speech the officers were shocked by the spirit and courage of the people they were produced before the district magic street camped at belkere who imposed one year and six month imprisonment respectively to them and sent them to karwar jail public knew this very well so they did not worried about this then lakshman lakshman venkatesh kamath with his 20 friends brought sea water and prepared salt publicly 19 satyagri sold the salt in front of the taluk office and auctioned it then the police arrested the shamrao shenai on 15th april thinking that he was a real mastermind 
of this entire episode. Total Haltal was observed on that day in Ankola to protest against the arrest of Chennai, the local leader. <coughs> According to the predetermined program, <coughs> about 50 to 60 youths of Belambara, Kene, Hitchcord, Babarwad, brought sea water and prepared salt in front of the Talkops. These are the villages in Ankola Taluk, that is Belambara, Kene, Hitchcord, Babarwad. Women also engaged in the act in their villages and broke the law. Ranga Divakar, president of the KPCC, was arrested on 16th April at Dharwad. The, then the district magistrate of Karwar issued an order to vacate the site of Satyagraha or arrest them. When the leaders refused to vacate <coughs> the site, the leaders like Hanumantra Kauzilgi, Kaka Kakaris, Tima Panayak and 25 others were taken away by the police. All of them were in jail for three months uh, uh, under a simple imprisonment and fined with the four piece 100 each, not 1000. Swami Suddhasthrama and Veerbhadra Sivashimpi were also arrested and sent to Belakere, Bangla. They were imprisoned for eight and four months respectively in Karwa jail. <clears throat> the Nanda was and other community people of Hitchkad, Kadme, Keni, Belambara, Avarsa, Belakere, Manjuguni. They went to sea in thousands and brought to part in the salt satyagraha. When the arrest of leaders continued, salt openly, but the police, local leaders like the Haman Govindana, the Bombaya Pankan uh, Park Scored, Naik of uh, Kanigi, Devana Hunappa Naik, like this. The district magistrate imposed four months imprisonment and uh, of rupees 50 as fine upon these four persons. Then Jogi Biran Naik was also arrested. Uh, for addressing the Satyagrahi. Then the district magistrate imposed six months simple imprisonment and rupees 100 fine to him, compared to Chilman, to, as a fine to them. The KPCC the, uh, at the Harvard passed a resolution to observe 26th April as a day of civil disobedience movement. The manufacture of salt was also started at Kumta. One hour, Haldipur. People gathered a large number of uh, large number of people and salt was sold openly in the market. N.S. Herdikar was released from jail. Thus, the civil disobedience was observed throughout Karnataka. The district administration sto stored the salt at uh, Sanikata. They also decided to bring it without paying any tax from Goa, a forced colony. The Satyagraha Mandal decided to enter it forcibly and bring out the salt. One more interesting incident happened on uh, 31st May 1930 at Torke. Mr. Sridhar Pandrang Balagi, uh, a resident of Kumta, with his 18 associate, decided to enter Sanikata, where salt was stored officially by the district magistrate. In spite of strict vigilance, the Satyagrahis succeeded in bringing salt to Kumta and sold it within 15 minutes. This is of their spirit. Custom collector Mr. Seal became helpless before the stunt of the masses. The students of Edward College at Ankola went to house to house to sell the salt. Student leaders like Kamlakar, Narvekar, and Venkatraman played a commendable role in selling the salt. Thus, the salt satyagra was in force for about two months up to 6th June 1930. Large number of people were arrested throughout Karnataka who broke the salt law imposed on the monopoly of salt. Salt was prepared in small nalas and river beds wherever it was possible in state. Thus, the Ankola incident created unity and developed the spirit of nationalism among the people of Karnataka is memorable. Thousands of Satyagrahis were arrested in different jails of Karnataka. The arrest was more in Bombay, Karnataka. The Salt Satyagraha was continued up to 31st March 1931 in Karnataka, but the Salt law was enforced up to March 1947. So this is all about the Salt Satyagraha. Uh, no tax company, there is nothing. There was uh, one more uh, event that took place uh, uh, in this area that is called as the uh, forest satyagraha, no tax company, meaning then uh, that is forest satyagraha. In under this uh, act, the British government or the British officials denied the entry of uh, animals into the forest for their grazing, uh, and uh, forest was the only source for the people of uh, uh, North Karnataka, uh, which was uh, supplying produce uh, uh, to them. As a result of this, 
uh, when the British made a law that uh, they should not allow to enter into the forest, they uh, uh, protested against this act and they were succeeded in uh, uh, ma making a negotiation with the British officials and it, then it was allowed uh, their animals to enter into forest for grazing. This is how the forest Tegra was almost Tegra which was uh, started by the people of uh, North Karnataka. In the similar way, the no tax campaign which was uh, held in uh, Uttarakhand, it was the only place in Karnataka. Uh, it also attracted uh, many national leaders you know, for this successful uh, uh, organization. Here also, as it was uh, uh, systematically organized, as in, in case of Saad Satyagraha, huh? in this uh, uh, no tax campaign also, a uh, committee was organized. So, Rangna Tivakar, who was the leader of the freedom movement in Bombay, Karnataka, he was the head of the Pradesh Congress Committee. Hence, the responsibility for organizing the no tax campaign was entrusted to him. And Karnataka Satyagraha board was set up. It was decided to start the campaign in Ankola Taluk because all the previous agitations like Salt Satyagraha and Forest Satyagraha, burning of forest uh, foreign clothes were proved very successful. The participant, uh, the main condition of this uh, campaign was the participants must be landholders and ready to lose their land and to go to jail and even to starve along with their family members. This was the last step of the civil disobedience movement. He, along, uh, this uh, uh, Dwakar, along with Do Dr. N.S. Hardikar and Simati Kamala Devi Panjikar, traveled extensively in Ankola Taluk. They met the Nadao leaders in a, in a temple at Survey and discussed about the pros and cons of the campaign. Leaders of the Nadao community, like uh, Rama Nayak uh, of Baskod, which I told you earlier, Bole Bomaya Nayak and Devana Nayak, Kanigi Hanmana Nayak, uh, Shatigeri, Jogi, etc., they attended and addressed the meeting. Ranganath Divakar explained the borderless tagra and hardships faced by the former state. Dr. Kabur from Darwad, he also addressed the gathering. Then Divakar conducted the similar other meetings at Ichkad, Vasri, Paskeri, Chetgeri, etc. Dr. Hadikar was declared as the commander of the Nadawas in this campaign. The main features of this campaign were to face the British openly by denying the payment of land revenue in Ankola, Sirsi, and Siddhapur Taluks. Participation of women along with their husband, sons, and daughters. Resignation of Patels for the government jobs and joining the movement. Confiscation of property, houses, and standing crops. Rigorous imprisonment maximum of one year. It was a non-violent movement and not to run, run away from the hesitation. So with these conditions, this campaign was started in North Karnataka. Uh, that is North Kendra. Uh, Karnataka was very much obliged to, to the All India Congress Committee who had fixed on the 26th February as the President's Day, and that's Farmer's Day, in which special sympathy was shown to the sufferers in the North Kendra district of Karwa uh, in Karnataka and Midnapur in Bengal, and feels gratified that her sufferings in the cause of country's freedom is recognized by the only all powerful political institution in the country under which auspicious the no tax campaign is being calculated. It was uh, the original idea uh, uh, to, to publish in an annual report. As I told you, uh, Andhana Padmati published this uh, proceedings uh, soon after this incident. Uh, so this is how, uh, here I am giving some uh, figures about, uh, there are nearly, in Ankola, there were 713 uh, Katidars who refused to pay the tax. In Siddhapur, it was 420. Number of villages taking part in this uh, campaign in Ankola Taluk, 88 villages and 144 in uh, Siddhapur Taluk. Total amount of revenue which was due in Ankola Taluk was 91,000 rupees, 255. In Siddhapur, it is about 1,50,000. Uh, amount withheld by the no tax, uh, it means by refusing 24,000 in uh, Ankola and uh, 75,000 in Siddhapur. The loss is due to attachment of, uh, of the property and other, this one, it was 44,980 rupees in Ankola and 49,000 rupees 119 in Siddhapur. This is how the, this information is drawn by uh, Dr. And, uh, uh, not Dr. Andhana Padarmati in his uh, report. Uh, in addition to these two taluks, where the no tax campaign was very uh, strong, Sirsi, Yallapur, uh, the two districts of this uh, North Kendra, as well as uh, Hirekirur in uh, Daro district, the Jan Daro district, they also took part in this uh, moment. Uh, this idea of how to, uh, the no tax are determined not to allow the government uh, to be able to realize uh, the revenue can be had from their determination 
uh, even to bear their crops to prevent the government from realizing the revenue. Several of them did not harvest the crops at all because as soon as they get the crops, uh, it was ready to uh, the government way, way, was ready to attach it. So, so this created a shortage of food uh, in this uh, part of uh, uh, Bombay Karnataka. So this was how ultimately uh, the people like Kalgamani Nagesh Hagade, uh, Bamaya Pokanayak, and uh, Birana Devana Nayak, Mani Birana Nayak, uh, Vannadas Mani Gauda. Uh, Ramagoda Huliapa Goda, Govinda Mankali Goda, and uh, uh, Devu Huliapa Goda, uh, Biru Timana Goda, Nagappa Buddha Goda, uh, Devu Tulsu Goda, Sri Nagesh Ganapati Hegade of Kagin Mani of Siddha Purtalu. Uh, so, like this, people refused to pay the tax when the British officer came to their houses, and uh, Sergeant Mirbat Rambat uh, Kulibid. Uh, so, Vagappa Manjappa Hegade of Hunegera, uh, Subrai Surbat of Gunjgurd, then Subaya Subrai Venkappa Hegade, so Waman Dasappa Madagankar of Belgi village. So, all these people refused to pay the tax in these leaders. So, now, <clears throat> so this was the second most important uh, uh, moment that took place in, uh, uh, in Bombay Karnataka. It is called as a no tax campaign. So, this was how the Sal Satyagraha. The no tax campaign and salt satyagraha. They can. They were the ma three main important events took place uh, in this part of Karnataka. Uh, <clears throat> in this connection, regarding the arrest of uh, uh, British officials, uh, uh, in, in, in this satyagraha is by the British officials uh, is uh, well documented by uh, Dr. Surat Kamath uh, while preparing his uh, most famous. Uh, uh, book uh, Satanta Sangramada Spritigalu, he compiled one systematic and uh, uh, report upon the peoples who were arrested during this uh, uh, moment. So he has given more than about 3,000 list of, uh, list of uh, uh, categories arrested in Belagam, Bijapur, Darwad, and uh, Uttarakhand district. Like that, <clears throat> I got uh, Three more most important files in uh, Maharashtra State Archives. Uh, but what uh, the British official did the small mistake is that instead of writing their uh, last surname, they have written the name of the uh, first person and his father. So here I, I face some problem uh, to trace those persons or the uh, persons who from which village. And so this is how the mistake done by them. So Dr. Sunat Kamath, uh, with his uh, personal uh, contact with the uh, freedom fighters of, at the time, he well documented and he has given a list of more than, uh, uh, as I told you earlier, more than uh, 3,000 persons. So like that, I have prepared a list of 6,000 persons who were arrested in this uh, uh, civil disobedience movement. And the last satyagraha which took place in, uh, it is called Hindu satyagraha. Whenever there were disturbances, Gandhiji allowed the local leaders to conduct any campaigns against the Britishers, but ready to pay the imprisonment or uh, some incidents like that. So this is how, the civil disobedience uh, movement, uh, which was not only restricted to Sal Satyagraha or no tax campaign, it was uh, continued even up to 1941. In different forms, it was continued in Karnataka, that's up to 1941. So when the uh, Gandhiji declared the Kutina movement on 8th uh, August 1942, so up to that, uh, it is known as civil disobedience movement. Even in Bombay State Archives, uh, uh, where I gone to few files, even they called the Quitini movement as also as a civil disobedience movement. Under that banner, uh, there are some uh, important files in which also they have given the people arrested uh, in Quitini movement also. But uh, Quitini movement is different from uh, this uh, civil disobedience movement in which uh, Bipin Chandra, a great historian of uh, Jawala Nehru University, he also uh, included only these four incidents, that is Sal Satyagraha, uh, No Tax Campaign, in Forest Satyagraha, and this uh, Indigenous Satyagraha as uh, moments of uh, uh, civil disobedience movements. So these are the, some of the important points which I would like to discuss with you. Uh, in the last paragraph, as it is explained by Bipin Chandra, the, uh, the conclusion is that the civil disobedience movement of 1930 to 1941 it marked a critically important stage in the progress of the anti-imperialistic uh, struggle. The number of people who went to jail was estimated to, uh, at over 90,000 in India. 
more than three times the figure of the non cooperation movement we can uh, trace here the differences between non cooperation movement and civil disobedience uh, movement uh, <clears throat> and uh, here uh, imports of cloth from britain had fallen by half it means uh, you know, indians refused to purchase the foreign cloth so the trade was affected by this uh, movement of civil disobedience other imports like uh, cigarettes uh, had suffered a similar fate government income from liquor excise and land revenue had been affected election to the legislative assembly had been uh, effectively boycotted a vast variety of uh, social groups had been politicized on the side of the indian nationalism uh, and it, this uh, the shopkeepers merchants and students took active part in tamil nadu punjab and in cities uh, in cities and in general peasants also come to the forefront in gujarat up bengal andhra pradesh bihar and tribals in the central provinces maharashtra karnataka and bengal also witnessed and also attracted the people oh. <clears throat> workers had not been missing from this battle either they also participated uh, they joined the numerous mass demonstration in bombay kolkata and especially the uh, mass movements so this is how we shall see the impact of this uh, uh, civil disobedience movement upon the freedom struggle of india it means it invited all uh, people of different sections of the society to take part active part in this uh, movement uh, so this is how the emergence of gandhi ji uh, even invited women also to take part in this uh, incident so this is how uh, uh, civil disobedience movement took place in bombay karnataka uh, so if there are any suggestions i highly welcome you so this is about the civil disobedience movement and the uh, impact of gandhi ji upon the freedom struggle in bombay karnataka so thank so you so much any questions uh, okay. yes sir, actually uh, dr sk aruni sir has uh, posted a message and a question in the chat box uh, so first of all i want to congratulate you and thank you on behalf of the history enthusiasts entire team and all our audience members because it was a very well articulated and uh, um, extremely detailed uh, lecture that you gave and uh, we are very thankful to you for that uh, for that uh, dr sk aruni sir has written the speaker has presented the theme of the lecture with full uh, in full of information and also incidents which were up to uh attain absolute freedom of our country from foreign rule i congratulate the speaker and the organizers best wishes uh, dr aruni and he has posted a question what were the responses of native people of goa during the salt agitation and civil disobedience uh, continued at the in the adjacent areas like karwar belgam and north canara so actually uh, they did not oppose the entry of kanadigas in karwa in fourth years they were kept quiet they allowed the people of karwar even belgam also to enter goa freely and to purchase the salt without paying any tax uh, even the british uh, portuguese officers also never uh, made any attempt to stop those uh, in, uh, persons who were entering goa to purchase the salt so it was freely brought to karwar and, uh, and they sold it openly so there was no any agitation on the part of the people of goa as well as uh, by the portuguese uh, government so there was it was a free access to them to purchase the salt and sell it in these two states thank you arni sir thank you very much sir uh, i have a question sir okay uh, when you were mention, uh, discussing about the gandhi irvin pact you mentioned that uh, uh, gandhi ji tried in fact to uh, commute the uh, sentence which was given to bhagat singh and uh, um, sukhdev and rajguru but today <laughs> there are a lot of people who are uh, uh, not only that issue but there are so many issues related to gandhi ji that are being uh, uh, miscommunicated or shown in a different light and uh, uh, what according to you sir has changed and why is gandhi being shown in such a bad light and are his ideas no. still relevant today no. actually gandhi's uh, ideas are very relevant today uh, since uh, from this entry into freedom struggle gandhi ji told that there should not be any uh, violence in this uh, moment of uh, freedom struggle so we know very well that uh, soon after chauri chaura incident in 1922 the non cooperation movement was stopped so gandhi ji did not uh, ask the opinion of any leaders he stopped this movement abruptly uh, telling that uh, as i believed in uh, non violence i should not uh, like this violence because the in the third page which is more important in indian freedom struggle they were fighting with the main objective of non violence so if they followed violent uh, method uh, the british may also follow the same uh, 
so at that time we uh, uh, there was mass killing of the indians so <clears throat> as my this uh, um, bhagat singh and his team all in some uh, violent incidents uh, gandhi ji argued with uh, uh, irwin to reduce that uh, rigorous imprisonment imposed upon those three uh, great uh, martyrs but uh, those irwin as well as the british government uh, were not uh, <clears throat> ready to uh, reduce that uh, uh, punishment given to them as a result he was angry but gandhi ji tried his level best in order to reduce the punishment given to those three leaders but it is most unfortunate thing that they were hanged it is our bad luck <clears throat> very true sir uh, at, and in fact as yeah. you mentioned uh, it would not have been possible for india to fight with the british with arms uh, as it was already proven once before uh, the idea of a peaceful and non violent struggle uh, was exactly what india needed at the time and uh, um, it, it gave us the fruit that we desired yeah Yes. So, with that intention, why Gandhi ji is celebrated as a great hero? Role to uh, throw to because uh, freedom can be achieved by this method. Also, is the it is the great lesson taught by Gandhi to the entire world. So that is why the you know even now decided to celebrate this day as a non-violence day throughout the world. Otherwise, it was not a big task to the British to finish us within a short time, as it was happening in Jallianwala Bagh and some other incidents like that. so gandhi ji stopped it because he knew very well that he, as he was fighting with without any weapons and trained soldiers also we don't have any strain and because of his entry <clears throat> women on large scale participated in the movement because half of the indian population was women yes uh, were women so as a result of this without their participation it was not a successful one so uh, they entered the participation of women is because of this uh, a weapon of non violence and satyagraha and truth yes. otherwise it was very difficult to uh, bring women uh, with arms and ammunition uh, yeah. uh, with your permission i can uh, can i ask you one more question sir yeah i can ask you can you are freedom uh, yes sir uh, freedom. my question is hmm. sir even before mahatma gandhi there were several leaders of the mass uh, in india uh, the leaders of congress uh but what was different between their strategy for indian independence and gandhi's strategy that made him so much different and that started his own era yeah uh, we can't say that uh, the moderates they followed just giving representation to the british government and uh, they conducted sessions they conducted public speech uh, so it was not a uh, wrong decision it was the right decision taken by them at the time because they also knew very well that they were fighting without any arm Uh, they knew very well uh, because uh, about the unification of Italy and unification of Germany, uh, which were achieved with uh, means of struggle against those uh, uh, colonies. They knew very well that as they were uh, not in a position to fight against the British with arms and ammunition, they followed a simple method. And uh, knowing that uh, as they, uh, the moderates failed even after fighting for twenty years, they failed in their mission. So the next group, uh, which we called as uh, extremists. and they followed the other method of uh, violence method and, uh, and that was and moreover <clears throat> uh, uh, if they continued the same method there would have been more uh, uh, incidents like this killing of british officers or killing the indians like that so gandhi ji uh, when this all these movements was going on he was emerged as a great leader of non violence in south africa <clears throat> so that was the uh, training center for him uh, to uh, show the entire nation or the entire country that even uh, freedom movement or any uh, concession can be gained by just by this peaceful means so he is successful experiments or peaceful experiments as south africa it developed some sort of courage in gandhi that this uh, this policy can be met, this policy can be followed in the freedom struggle so that is why this was not believed by other leaders as a result of this gandhi ji was only took the leadership for 27 years and i think in the history of the whole world nobody uh, took the lead of 27 years in the freedom struggle without any arms and ammunition so we know very well that who followed this arms and ammunition or violence activity they did not uh, continue for a long time so and even in order to gather the masses you require training either uh, you you train them with arms and ammunition or you train without any arms and ammunition the women who were mainly restricted to houses and their uh, agricultural work they should do, they require some sort of uh, uh, moral courage how they can fight without any these uh, weapons and they knew very well that there was a very hard days if they fought with arms and ammunition so uh, that is why gandhi ji was succeeded fully by his peaceful uh, 
weapons like the satyagraha truth and non violence method so uh, the earlier two pages of indian um, did not attack women so there are very few uh, women participated in uh, movement however subhash chandra bose was succeeded in uh, forming a women uh, regiment in his uh, ina but uh, uh, we know very well that how a single leader can vote for that <clears throat> absolutely sir uh, thank you so yeah. much sir and uh, um before we end this lecture if anybody else has any question you can kindly unmute yourself and ask if you have anything to add kindly unmute yourself or you can post it in the chat box so i will tell you one thing because of this uh, for this non no tax campaign the indian national congress, uh, congress selected uh, three districts three talks of karwa district you one um, this is my question personal question Uh, there were large number of landowners in bijapur belagam and other districts also they so they did not select the, those areas why they selected this uh, north kendra means uh, people were committed towards their uh, work and uh, if the people if the farmers or the leaders of this uh, bijapur darwad and uh, belagam participated in it there was a chance of losing a huge land Uh, under the under the banner of no tax campaign and here in uttarakhand it they were land holders with the small land holders not a big land owners and moreover only paddy was grown on large scale but in the rest of Kar- bombay karnataka all food important food grains were grown so the congress also decided not to affect the cultivation of food crops uh, by celeb- by t- undertaking this type of campaign in rest of uh, bombay karnataka other than uttarakhand so and the people were a little bit educated you know, we, if we take the literacy of this uh, uttarakhand even today and even at that time also it is more uh, since then so as a result these people both women and men were highly uh, educated and it means they were uh, aware of this uh, development taking place by their participation so they were they can be easily convinced of uh, how to start this type of uh, movement so they selected this area and as a sample i think they took uh, hirekeru taluk also which was uh, Uh, neighboring area of this uh, karwa district so this is my personal uh, observation why they did not select uh, the rest of uh, place of bombay karnataka other than uttarakhand thank you sir and you know that uttarakhand is a very typical district there are many even today there are people speaking many languages uh, geographical nature is very different from uh, taluk to taluk halyali is different halyali and mundrigi are one uh, mundgoda is one uh, geographic area Jhoda, Ankola, Karwar, Kumta, Hanavar, but they have different geographical culture, and people, different community people are living. They, uh, take for example, Nadwas are there, uh, Vakkalgas, Gaudas are there, and uh, Hovak Brahmins are there. So like that, there are different. Uh, I think in the rest of Karnataka, we do not find this type of mixed culture. Even language also different. Uh, different people, different people are speaking different languages. And one uh, I observed that uh, one uh, Nagraj, but Tekkar is from uh, journalist is from. Uh, Uh, Shidapur. He wrote continuously uh, 60 articles during Azad ke Amrit Mohanta on this part of uh, this uh, freedom movement in uh, North Kendra. So, like that, people of different sections, high school teachers, primary school teachers, uh, primary uh, journalists, they also worked very lot on this topic. I think we, uh, being lecturers of history and research scholars, they are not taken serious about this uh, research work in this uh, on this topic. So, I hope in future we must uh, concentrate our attention and. Uh, Recently, I uh, conducted interview of two uh, living uh, freedom fighters. One is Mundgod, and another one is Haryana. Uh, so far, nobody approached them regarding their uh, participation in the to collect those materials. And one more person from Chittapur is staying in uh, Sorab Talu, uh, Haripai. So, like that, there are three living uh, freedom fighters in Uttar Kannada. So, one must consult them to take. Uh, they are not in a position to speak uh, in a lengthy lectures. Um, Because of their old age, they can't hear properly. One is ninety-eight, that uh, Pai who is living in Sorab, and ninety-four who is in Mundgod, a lady, Lila Devi Chelwadi, and Krishna Patel is in Haliyar near Haliyar in one village, Mundu, um, that's called Mangalwada. So like that, we failed in uh, taking their uh, material or taking their experience, collecting experiences. So that what we should have done earlier. Absolutely, sir. Thank you, Manali. Thank you, sir. Okay. I, absolutely, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, collecting yeah. of oral history. uh is a very very important uh, part of reconstructing a all inclusive and uh, uh, complete history of our uh, nation especially the local uh, areas so uh, and since we have lost many of the freedom fighters because it's been so long since the independence movement 
but uh, your work is commendable sir in this area and we are very much inspired by you to take yeah. up such no it is my duty as a history lecturer it is my duty to study in depth and uh, i got one in important information when uh, interviewing the leela devi chelwati she was uh, brought up by uh, nagama patil uh, who was co founder of this mela vidyapeet in hubli along with her husband viran goda patil they were running one balika ashram as she was a woman of uh, uh, um, she was a single child, single parent uh, child so she was brought to that balika ashram and she was brought up by nagama patil so like that balika ashram is uh, mainly brought nearly about 12 girls from a uh, scheduled caste community so like that they had uh, some intention to protect those girls and they educated them and that's why mela vidyapeet was started uh, Uh, in Hubli to educate those girls. Uh, she remembered very well the, the role of Nagama Patil and Birnagoda Patil, uh, who were also uh, very commendable women establishing the one uh, that Kaji Center at uh, Hubli. Yes. So like that, we get some information from them also. Yes, sir. Even the Bhagini Mandal, okay. in fact, was, uh, yeah, yeah. which was under the Uma Devi Kundapur. Yeah. Uh, it, it did yeah, a yeah, yeah. great commendable job, especially yeah. in the 1924 Kalgam uh, session. Yeah. Uh, Krishna Bhai Panjikan also played a dominant role. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Uh, as there are no more questions and uh, uh, suggestions, uh, we have come to the end of this lecture, and I would like to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, first of all, uh, my heartfelt gratitude to our resource person today, uh, Dr. B. N. Akhi, sir, for giving this wonderful, very detailed, and comprehensive lecture, uh, which has uh, thrown light on so many uh, aspects of civil disobedience movement in Bombay, Karnataka region. uh sir thank you very much for accepting our invitation and sharing your valuable time and knowledge with us thank you sir okay, thank you. i also thank, thank uh all the participants who have joined us today here um uh, there are some names that i would like to mention uh dr rm shalakshraya sir dr uh, sk aruni sir dr shiladhar mugli sir dr ibrahim saudagar uh and uh, several others dr p kanan from uh, kannada uh, state uh, a uh, karnataka state akamahadevi women's university and uh, a lot of others have joined all the students and uh, our research scholars who have joined us through this uh, lecture thank you all very much i also want to thank uh, ms nidhi katti co uh, oh, sorry founder vice president of the history enthusiasts uh, dr aditya hegde executive committee member of the history enthusiast and all the other office bearers of the history enthusiasts who have joined us through this lecture thank you all once again uh we will see you soon with another lecture and uh, another academic endeavor until then uh, stay safe stay blessed thank you all we are ending here thank you manal thank you thank you sir